What a perspective now. And my guest on the program today is a Nobel Prize winning quantum physicist. Serge Arroche won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2012 along with American physicist David Wineland for their work on studying quantum phenomena when matter and light interact. He's also taught at universities like Yale and Stanford and served as chair of quantum physics at the Collège de France. Now he's serving on the honorary committee of the International Physics Olympiad, a prestigious competition for aspiring scientists under the age of 20 for the first time in 55 years. It's being held in France and gets underway this Thursday. Serge Arroche, thank you very much for joining us today. Let's start a little bit uh, from the beginning. What first got you into to physics, especially quantum physics, and um, how, did you, how did you get into it? At the beginning, it was not quantum physics. It was physics in general. I was really amazed by the fact that you can explain the world or at least try to explain the world with simple mathematics. And so it happens in astronomy, in astrophysics, but also in physics. And the direction towards quantum physics was just by chance because I had very good teacher, charismatic teachers when I started uh, my studies after high school and I was immediately uh, dragged into quantum physics at that time. And for us laymen, can you explain a little bit about your research, specifically your methods in uh, studying uh, quantum physics, these most tiny uh, parts yeah. of our atmosphere? Yeah, quantum physics is about uh, the behavior of matter at the most uh, elementary level, atoms, photons, which are the particles of light, subatomic particles, which are studied in big accelerators. And when you understand the properties of this, uh, this matter at this scale, you can invent new devices which have changed our life during the last century. In fact, all uh, the instruments that we are using daily without asking ourselves from where they come, come from our knowledge in quantum physics. The GPS is based on atomic clocks, uh, magnetic resonance uh, imaging, which is used in medicine, is also a quantum based on quantum phenomena. And I could go on and on talking about lasers, computers. So all our surroundings or our technological surroundings are based on the knowledge we have, we have acquired over the last century about quantum physics. In fact, quantum physics was established in the modern, its modern form exactly one century ago in 1925. And so it's uh, fitting that the physics Olympiads take place this year in Paris. This year, the, the year of uh, yeah. quantum physics. How, um, when you're going about your research, um, how have you approached such abstract ideas, um, particularly in your work that won you the Nobel Prize? Was it something that you had to visualise? Yes. In fact, it's, no, it's not so much abstract. We do experiments and the experiment, of course, we acquire knowledge about the, this world by using through instruments which do not give a direct access to what we are seeing, but we get indirect proofs, indirect evidence of quantum phenomena by using lasers, by using accelerators, by using all kinds of equipment and contraption. And you are right that it's not obvious because this world does not obey to the intuitions that we have in the, in the macroscopic world. So we have to build up our intuition of this phenomena which some people or many people uh, believe are strange but of course I don't like the word strangeness because there is a rational explanation for it. You are particularly interested in in light and what is light. You also yeah. wrote a book called The Science of Light. Yeah. Uh, what, draw, what drew you to that? I think light uh, is very important. If you think about it, almost all the information we get from the outside world is coming from light. Uh, I see you, you see me because of the light that we are scattering. Astronomy, which was the first form of uh, modern knowledge, is based on the observation of the universe through the light that the stars are emitting and also through other kinds of light which is not visible, like microwaves. So it's very important to understand light as uh, the carrier of all information. And also the discoveries about light have made possible to understand the world. The theory of relativity, the theory of quantum physics, all has come from puzzling uh, properties of light which uh, scientists have tried to understand over the centuries. It has started much before quantum physics uh, and it's a fascinating uh, uh, advent adventure. Many of the people that even non-scientists know about, people like Newton or Einstein or Niels Bohr, have been interested primarily about light and, and the effect that light produces 
on matter. Well, that's it. The book is described as a passionate defense of uh, this kind of blue sky research. Yes. So research that's not necessarily in pursuit of a goal, but, but more about curiosity and wanting to, um, you know, put faith in, in these kinds of studies that could result in something more concrete in the future. Yeah. Have you seen any, any examples of that? Yes, of course. It, it, it's very important to insist upon the notion of curiosity. In fact, we do science not because it's useful. At least the scientists who are uh, passionate by science do it because it, you acquire knowledge and it's part of civilization. I, I, the start of this might be uh, uh, the 17th and 18th century, the period of enlightenment. And it's very important that the word light is in the word enlightenment. The fact that we, we are motivated by curiosity. And of course, after that, and sometimes many decades after the discoveries have been made, you get applications, you get uh, new devices, new tools which come from the basic science. But basic, so this is what the kind of excuse we have to give uh, to people who give money to the government that the research will be useful for something. But this is not the main reason we are doing it. We are doing it because we are curious and the applications come after all. What is true is that if you don't do, as you said, blue sky research, there will never be applications. So we have to invest in that, the governments have to invest in that, knowing that the outcome will come much later. Curiosity is yes. uh, very important. And on the topic of future discoveries in the next generation, as I mentioned, you're on the honorary committee of the International Physics Olympiad. What are you looking out for in this competition? Uh, first of all, I think it's very important to have uh, young people, young students from all over the world gathering in Paris. Of course, last year we had the Olympic Games, which were about sport. Now it's about physics. It's a quite different game and it doesn't have the same values, but it's very important, especially at, at a time when you have so many conflicts in the world, so many bad things happening. I think it's uh, very comforting to see that young people, in spite of all the boundaries, can meet uh, together and can share the same values, the same curiosity about the world around us. And I think it's very important because this is a young generation which will be responsible for our future. The, the young scientists of now would be the engineers, uh, the young students of now would be the future engineers and scientists of today, and they will have many challenges uh, to meet. Any challenges in particular that you, you think are in desperate need of solving? Yeah, uh, there are, first of all, of course, we have the challenges, uh, uh, technological challenges, how to mitigate the effect of global warming, how to get new uh, sources of fuel which are not... Uh, producing uh, greenhouse effects, uh, how to uh, use solar energy in a more efficient way. All these problems have to be solved by physics. But you have also more fundamental issues. In, in physics, there is a, a big mystery, is the fact that quantum physics that we talked about is not uh, uh, giving deep answer to uh, the physics of gravitation. Gravitation, general relativity and quantum physics are still not connected by a single theoretical frame and this is a big issue uh, for fundamental physics which uh, needs another Einstein to solve and I hope that the young uh, generation, among the young generation, will have this kind of person. I hope so too and, and back to this International Physics Olympiad, it's the first time that it's being held in France. What does that mean for the country, especially as a French physicist? Um, does this mean anything for France's influence on the world of science and education? Yes, I think it's very important because France has been a country which has been at the forefront of scientific discoveries over the centuries. We have now some problems in education, as everybody knows, the fact that the level of students in, in science has declined but it's not the case at the highest level. We still have, and we have, very, very good uh, young mathematicians, young physicists who can compete with the best in the world, and this is what uh, I'm sure they will show in these Olympiads. All right, the Olympiad, uh, which gets underway this Thursday, uh, runs for several days. Serge Arroche, thank you very much for speaking to us on France 24. Thank you.